We'll see how we can solve another question from the fourth chapter of the Merriam textbook in Geomechanics. Mechanics. So we have this truss that is composed of equilateral triangles of sides of A, and we know we have some loads on it, as we can see in the figure, and we need to determine the forces in member EF, so this member DE and DF, and we have a note the forces are positive if in tension and negative if in compression. So as always, we're going to start with the freeway diagram of the whole truss as one single object. So uh, we have to figure out all the external forces first. Since we have a pin at point A, we're going to consider one force in x direction and one in y. Let's show our x and y in here too. And if we look at E, we have a roller, which means we only have normal force at point E. So we are in equilibrium. We can use our equilibrium equation sum of all forces equals zero and same for the moment but it makes sense to start with our moment equation since we have most of our unknowns at point a so we're going to do the moment about that point so that way we can get rid of ax and ay and if we do that what we're going to have is the moment of the l as we can see that's going to be in this direction so negative moment for that the force is what we have as l and the distance that we are interested in here is the vertical distance from a to the line of action of this force which is basically what we have in here. and if you look at that triangle uh, actually right triangle that we have in here that side would be the hypotenuse which is a plus a cosine of 30 so basically 2a cosine of 30 degrees and that's going to be the moment for that force we also have the moment of our force e perpendicular to that surface if we can dissolve this force into two components one in this direction and one in this direction we can see that this angle here would be 30 degrees and this component in here won't make any moment because it's going to pass through point a and we're going to have the moment of perpendicular component to that which if we we'll look at it First of all, the moment would be in this direction. So we have a counterclockwise moment. So positive, the force is E sine of 30 degrees. Since we are having this side and it would be the opposite to the 30 degrees. And the distance would be basically what we have from A to E, which is our vertical distance. So A plus A plus A or 3A. <clears throat> And this will be equal zero and we can find e in here which will be 2al cosine of 30 degrees over 3a sine of 30 degrees we can cancel out a in here and we know cosine of 30 degrees is the square root of 3 over 2 and sine of 30 degrees is 1 half so if we divide these two, these two will be cancelled out, and we're going to end up with 2L square root of 3 over 3. So that's our E. And now we can start with the free by diagram of that joint. Since we have the reactions at that one, we have what we found for E was 2L square root of 3 over 3. We're going to have the member in here, DE. And we're going to have also the member EF. So let's just take a random direction for now. We'll see what happens after if we get a negative sign. We'll figure it out. And here, you know, this angle is 60 degrees because we have equilateral triangle. So that angle is 60 degrees and we know that E is perpendicular to D. So, uh, so we are allowed to consider any X and Y that we want. And basically we are trying to make X and Y that make things easier for us. And in here, if we just consider this as our X and this, uh, this one, our Y and this one, our X. It's going to help us with our calculation. The reason is that if we start with the sum of all forces in x direction, uh, on x direction we have the x component of EF, which would be this force. 
and this will be our y and that's going to be ef sine of 60 degrees minus 2l squared of 3 over 3 equals 0 and we can find our member ef in here so this is going to be you can cancel out the square root of 3 4l divided by 3 we did not get any negative sign that shows that was the correct direction for ef so the member ef which is here is going to be in compression so this will be compression that would be our first member and if we do sum of all forces in y direction this time we will have de positive minus the y component of ef which is ef cosine of 60 we found ef 4l over 3 and cosine of 60 degrees equals 0 and de would be 4l over 3 cosine of 60 is 1 half same value as sine of 30 and this is going to be 4l over 3 again no negative sign that shows that member de in here will be in tension so so far we found de uh, so we found ef and de and there is only one left which is fd so if you just move on to another joint maybe joint d we should be able to find the last unknown in here so let's do that we're going to do the free by diagram of joint d and we found our force oh i did here i made a mistake this is equal to two-third of l so now that was our member de and if we want to show that force we have to watch for that because now that we are in joint d we found that member DE is actually in tension, so the force on member D has to be in this direction. So that was our DE, which we found was 2 third of L. We have one more force, DF, and the last member that is attached. Again, we just can pick up whatever direction that we want for now, and we'll figure out if it's correct or no. And this one will be C and each of these angles are again 60 degrees because we have a collateral triangle and whatever we are not interested in here is the member cd so we are looking for member df in here which is this one so we care about this member so we're just going to consider our x and y uh one in this direction if we just call this one our y and this one our x so that means this angle right here has to be 30 degrees because this angle is 90 degrees so this was 60 and this will be 30 and we have the same thing in here too that will be 30 degrees so our x will pass exactly at the middle of df and d we're not going to do some of all forces in y direction because we are not looking for cd uh, that's actually why i put my y axis on cd so we can get rid of cd and we can find df in here. So we have de cosine of 30 minus df cosine of 30 degrees equals zero. So that shows that our df is basically the same as de. And what we found for de was two thirds of L. And we did not get any negative sign that shows our assumption for df is correct. So df in here would be in compression. So yeah, that's pretty much everything for this question. Hope everything was clear. Let me know if you guys have any questions and you guys take care. I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.